And Mocha Don is right is back at you. I'm Mocha Don, and today is Super Tuesday. So happy Super Tuesday. Uh, 15 states are going to vote for the Republican candidate today. It's kind of between Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. Nikki's not doing so good for very understandable reasons. Nikki's basically a Democrat in Republican clothing, and she's entirely funded by Democrats. There's really no reason for her to be in the race at this point, but um, I'm going to let Sean Spicer tell it to you. He does it really well. Sean, Nikki Haley, she's still appealing very forcefully to voters, but is her message sounding less empowering and more like a woman scorned? I think it's more like a person with no path forward. I mean, as of tonight, 49.81% of all delegates will have been chosen in this contest, 874 at stake tonight. And here's the thing, of the 15 states, 10 of them, while technically proportional, have a clause in them that says if you get more than 50%, you get all of the statewide delegates. That's good news for Donald Trump. And I think the bottom line is, once you can't use that talking point that only a few states have voted, you've run out of talking points, you've shown no path forward, you don't have any potential way to the nomination. Tonight, whether she wants to admit it or not, it is the end. Yeah, tonight's going to be the end for Nikki Haley. Nikki um, is entirely funded by Democrats. All I can imagine is there's some way for her to be making personal profit off of that, because otherwise, why would she be wasting her time and making enemies in what's going to be the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump? So I'm not going to talk anymore about Super Tuesday. There's a lot of live shows. Red Eagle Politics is the guy I like the best. Uh, on YouTube. So let's talk about one other thing that's come up. The Democrats have really gone off the rails. This is not your father's Democrat party. This is the, the Democrats of Venezuela, the Democrats of Cuba. I don't even recognize them anymore. And it's gotten to be really sad. There have always been the lunatics but this is worse than that. And I can't imagine how someone as utterly incompetent and feckless as Joe Biden is getting 40% of the vote. By the way, Joe Biden's primary, his Super Tuesday is also tonight, but he's running completely unopposed because the Democrat Party does not tolerate any free speech or opposition. And that's why Robert Kennedy Jr. is having to run essentially as an independent, which if you can't stomach voting for Donald Trump and you want to vote for somebody who's a good human being, although very liberal, I would vote for Robert Kennedy. Robert Kennedy is not someone I'm personally considering voting for because he is so liberal. But he is, I believe, honest. I don't think he's the criminal that the Democrat Party has come to represent. All right, so basically Nikki Haley is going to be done after the night. Whether or not she chooses to be done is up to her. Whether that's because she's getting money from Democrats and somehow profiting on that, or she thinks that Donald Trump is going to be assassinated and she'll be the last candidate standing, I don't know. But what I can tell you is what the left is doing isn't out of ignorance. It isn't out of stupidity. It is out of sheer evil. And they have a plan from their terrible crime policies to the immigration policies to their violating the Constitution in every imaginable way from violating the First Amendment, violating the Second Amendment violating the Fourth and Fifth Amendments. What they are doing is part of a bigger plan. Obviously, the voters are just idiots. They don't know. They just uh, are out of touch with the reality. Here's a, here's a video from the Riverside County Sheriff talking about what has happened in California. And it, whether you live in California or not, you should watch this video because so many people who don't live there don't realize how bad it has gotten. It has gotten very, very bad in California. So give this a listen. Let me know what you think. 
Good morning. Chad Bianco, Riverside County Sheriff. We are here today because California public safety is in crisis. Crime is steadily on the rise, and our public safety policy is one of the worst, if not the worst, in the nation. I want to make this clear, and I want there to be no mistake in what I am saying. This is not by accident. The driving force in our crisis is a radical, progressive agenda fraudulently called criminal justice reform. This is nothing short of a sick and twisted social experiment where law enforcement is the bad guy and criminals are somehow victims of society and not responsible for their actions, their crimes, or accountable to their countless victims. This agenda began with the passage of AB 109, the so-called Public Safety Realignment Act. State government failed to take responsibility for prison overcrowding or their failure to build more prisons and instead forced county jails to house state inmates while simultaneously releasing thousands of felons early. This has pushed our county jails to a near collapse and caused the early release of countless criminals. Thousands upon thousands of criminals are being released from custody early, crime is increasing, and our governor is closing prisons instead of building new ones. It defies common sense. In 2014, a complete fraud was perpetrated in California. The so-called Safe Streets and Safe Schools Initiative, Prop 47, changed many felonies to misdemeanors, basically legalized drug use, and increased the amount of petty, petty theft to nearly $1,000. In 2016, another lie was perpetrated on voters with the naming and wording of Prop 57, tricking voters into approving the release of thousands of violent criminals onto our streets and neighborhoods. This is why we are here. Everyone knows Prop 47 and 57 are disasters, and yet Governor Newsom adamantly touts it as a success, and lawmakers continue to refuse to fix their, their mistake and the problems that they have created. When once crimes are no longer crimes, it allows Governor Newsom and Attorney General Bonta to cite completely flawed data points to support their failures. Californians are now suffering the consequences of a failed social agenda. We are now at our breaking point and Californians have had enough. The lie of Prop 47 has been exposed and the progressive love affair with criminals at the expense of victims has infuriated law-abiding Californians. While we suffer every day with rampant theft causing our small businesses to close and our large box stores to move out of state, our supermajority of lawmakers sit here in their guarded tower oblivious to what is going on in their communities, experiencing drastic increases in all crimes, particularly violent crimes. Over the past five years, law enforcement has been unable to get our progressive left majority to even consider any new law or modification to an existing law that would increase punishment or send criminals to prison. Reality has gone completely upside down to the point our governor, our lawmakers, and our attorney general refuse to prosecute criminals, to include those criminals committing crimes with guns, and instead have dedicated their efforts to disarm and remove constitutional protections of self-defense from law-abiding Californians. We are in a very important election year, and the political silliness is surfacing all around us. The same supermajority who refused any sort of tough on crime laws for the past several years are up for re-election. They are now claiming they are going to address our public safety crisis with new laws cracking down on crime. The problem is every one of their bills are disingenuous and hollow. For instance, one bill claims to address theft by lowering the felony limit back to $400. Upon examination of the bill, you will find that it gives these career criminals three more chances to steal and be convicted before they are sentenced to prison. That is three, a minimum of three, more victims. We cannot turn on the news, read the newspaper, go to the grocery store, or open our businesses without being slapped in the face of reality that criminals have been emboldened by a lenient system that holds no consequence for criminal behavior. Instead of addressing the obvious, tone deaf Governor Newsom attacks a Target employee for not stopping a criminal from fleeing the store instead of taking an honest look at the failed social experiment that he himself leads that allowed that theft to occur. 
It is time we wake up and hold our politicians accountable for what their bills, laws, and policies have caused. It is time to return to a common sense approach to crime, realizing and admitting that there are evil people who refuse to conform to a civilized society and instead choose to victimize the rest of us by stealing our property, robbing our stores, flooding our streets with drugs, including fentanyl, breaking into our homes, murdering our children, and giving the middle finger to our justice system. Californians deserve better. I am proud to support lawmakers like Bill Asaley and several others who acknowledge that criminals are responsible for their actions and they need to be held accountable. Thank you. Okay, so that's it for tonight. Please vote for Donald Trump. Vote for the most conservative candidates you can. What we're doing here is nothing new. In the past, you know, they reformed everything. Crime went down in New York with Giuliani and we, we know that punishing criminals works. We know that having our Fourth Amendment rights protected so that the FBI isn't snooping on us works. We know that free speech as a fundamental value works. And all we can do is, is hold up our end of the bargain and hope the left figures it out. Otherwise, something much worse is going to happen. So thank you. God bless. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We need your help. We're a small channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing is the biggest one for me right now. And you all have a fantastic Tuesday. Take care.